Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I, uh, they set up this uh, like tripod, so I'm gonna utilize it. So uh, the front-facing camera's on. I'm not checking myself out. I'm just making sure I'm in frame. All right. Um, you know, usually I don't start off my act singing, but I was inspired by Dan, so I'm gonna do a little song. <laughs> I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. Thanks. That goes out to my dad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I like to start gross. Um, but I haven't done that in years, but Dan inspired me, man. Um, I was talking to my grandma recently. Weird follow-up to that, show, by the way. Um, I was talking to my grandma, and she goes, Luke, you're, 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 too, you're getting old. You're 25. When I was 19, I was married, and when I was 22, I had a kid. Like, that was some sort of flex. I was like, damn, grandma, that sounds fucking terrible. Why would I want to do that to myself? By the way, she was divorced at 25. So I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> um, but it's true. I mean, a, a lot of people I know, or at least I met once and have just been friends on Facebook with for years, are um, starting to get engaged. And it's crazy. I, I was on Facebook and I saw a guy literally propose to his girlfriend in a mall. She's wearing a mask. He has it down around his chin. There's a sunglass hut in the background. Like, yeah, that's so romantic. It's gonna be a great story to tell your kids when you get to see them every other weekend. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm bitter. Uh, right before, a few months before COVID started, I, uh, I got dumped. That's how my 2020 started, it was fun, yeah. It's, it was, it's been a while, okay? But uh, we were in a relationship for seven years and then she dumped me. I know, it, it was crazy. Um, before panic attacks and Alexa Pro prescription later, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking get my life together. I'm gonna improve myself. <laughs> Damn it! So first thing I did, I was like, I want to get in shape. So I started a vegan diet, and it was incredible. After yeah, after just a week, I already lost five friends. <laughs> um, no, but the weirdest thing because not only was I trying to navigate dating for the first time since high school. I, uh, I had to date during a global pandemic at the same time. It was fucking crazy. My game had not evolved since I was 17 years old. One, one encounter I had with a woman before COVID, uh, I was talking to her and I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any moves. I had no game. So I was like, I'm going to show her a picture of my dog. Everybody loves dogs. It's a good move, right? So I pulled my phone. She, I was like, check out my dog. And before I can drop a smooth ass line, like, yeah, she's a rescue, but honestly, it feels like she's the one that rescued me, you know? She did the unimaginable. She swiped through my phone. So I'm like, hey, check out my dog. And that's my dick. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't for you. That wasn't for anyone. I don't send those. I practice. I take them as practice. Because you never know. Someone might ask one day, and I want to be ready. You know, it's like JV football junior year. Sometimes... Your team goes up by 40 points and the coach finally puts you in the game. And you're like, this is my moment, I'm ready. And boy, do I practice. I set up a ring light, wear my fake Rolex, just in case, you know, she might not like what I got going on, but maybe she'll like the ice on my wrist, you know? But there she is holding my phone, going, whose dick is this? And but I just panicked, I was flustered. I was like, oh, that's, that's my friend's dick. <laughs> on my phone and she didn't even question it she was like did your friend know he has a little dick i was like i don't think he uh, knew that i think he thought it was uh, it's quite average actually did you notice his fake rolex uh, i mean a real rolex it's pretty nice right i've also learned that things that were cool in high school aren't cool anymore as adults like hand jobs yeah, I matched with this girl on Tinder, and she goes, you know, I'm not the kind of Tinder hookup where we have sex on the first date, but I'll give you a hand job. And I'm telling the story to my friends. And when I mention this part, my one friend's like, fuck that. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean, fuck that? And he's like, if all I'm gonna get is a hand job, I might as well just do it myself. I was like, let me get this straight. Like an actual human woman is agreeing to touch your wiener, and you're like, ah, no thanks. You're good here. And my friend just looks at me and he's like, yeah, man, hand jobs are just so middle school. Like, what fucking middle school did you go to? 
I went to the middle school with no hand jobs. <laughs> I also went to the high school with no hand jobs. <laughs> you know, now that I'm single, um, I have friends who tell me, you know, Luke, don't do that joke that says you have a little wiener, you know? <laughs> you don't want girls in the audience to know that. But then I have other friends who are like, no, fuck it, do it, because then expectations are low, you know? They won't be disappointed. It's like I have an angel and a devil on my shoulder constantly arguing about my dick jokes. And by the way, I don't, when I sit down to write jokes, I don't always go, I'm wiener, wiener, wiener. It's like, this just happens. I don't know. Wieners are funny, but we can transition out, out, of, out of wieners for a little bit. <laughs> I, uh, I'm an actor. Are you surprised? <laughs> I'm, but I'm originally from LA, which is, it's kind of rare. I meet a lot of actors who are from other places. Uh, Nate mentioned I work at Universal Studios. Every tour guide is an actor and 98% of them come from other places. And so when, uh, when I'm in the break room sometimes, people are like, oh, the traffic getting here was just so terrible. I'm like, it's your fault. You did this. They're like, traffic wasn't this bad in Mansfield, Ohio. I'm like, you could have stayed there. <laughs> LA's got enough out of work actors, damn it. But as an actor, um, when you're doing a, a scene, sometimes you have to recall on past experiences to bring out those emotions, right? So I was working on this short film uh, a little over two years ago now, and the final scene was this emotional scene. It was like the, the the finale of the movie, we came together, very emotional. So the actress and myself in the scene went off on our separate corners to get into character. Um, so we do the scene, everything's good. Afterwards, the director comes up and he's like, hey, just out of curiosity, like what did you guys channel like, to, to get in that emotional space? And the actress was like, well, I thought about the time when I was eight years old and my dad left our family. And everyone's like, wow, that's... It's tragic, I'm sorry. And they're like, Luke, what did you think about? And I was like, ah, I thought about when the Dodgers lost the World Series. <laughs> and everyone's like, really? That's what you thought about? And I was like, well, to be fair, they lost twice. Her dad only left once, so. <laughs> It'll really suffer more. I mean, and I think if you watch that final scene, you'll see I was able to squeeze out just a little more emotion. <laughs> I'm also a writer. I say I'm a writer, but to be a writer, you actually have to write shit. Every time I open my laptop, I always just end up watching hours of YouTube videos on my phone. <laughs> and then I put my laptop away and I'm like, ah, I'm a writer, fuck it. <laughs> so I was talking to a friend of mine and she's like, you know, I have an Adderall prescription. What if I just give you an Adderall? You'll get a lot done, you'll be very productive. I was like, that sounds fucking good to me. So she gave me an Adderall and I opened my laptop and then I got on my phone and watched YouTube, but very focused. I was like, ooh, this Watch Mojo top 10 is very interesting. I'm gonna fucking pay attention to this. Got a lot of YouTube done that night. Done. Before uh, I was a triple threat actor, comedian, writer, I um, <laughs> put that on my tombstone. Um, in high school, I, I wanted to be a rapper originally. And I know looking at me, you're like, yeah, makes sense. It's probably why I went to the high school with no hand jobs, by the way. But <laughs> I wanted to be a rapper. I was fucking super into it. My favorite movie was Eight Mile. You know, in, in the beginning of Eight, yeah, we got an Eight Mile fan over there. You know, in the beginning of Eight Mile, when he's like hyping himself up in the mirror and he's like getting ready, it's like super cool. I used to do that. Um, I still try to do that for comedy, but it's not the same because <laughs> you're just kind of in the mirror like, <laughs> not, not as good. I don't get hyped up as, as good doing that. Um, <laughs> by the way, I'm not you, like you could tell I was not a good rapper. By the way, I just recreated that scene for my mouth. Like, right. but I wanted. I was serious. I wanted to be a rapper, and my rap name was Sugar B. Yeah, because my rhymes were sweet like sugar. My last name's Broils, and that's. That's all the creativity that went into that. But there was a lot of people in my high school that wanted to be rappers. And so one day we all got together and we asked uh, the administration if we could put on a little showcase during lunch of our rap abilities. And they said, sure, as long as you keep it clean and keep it short. We're like, fine. And so they're like, hey, Sugar B, you wanna go first? I go, hell yeah, I'll lead off this fucking thing. So we go on stage and um, 
They had a, a kid in his JROTC uniform doing the beatbox, sound a little something like So if you put that on a loop in your head, I'll uh, show you what I did. Uh, I can't do both, so. <clears throat> Yo, what up, world? My name is Sugar B. Let me tell you all a little something about me. My rhymes will put you in a trance. It's like hypnosis, and my chain's so big, it'll give you scoliosis. <laughs> and my rhymes are so endless, never run out of material. People say life's a game, I say it's a delicious cereal. But I like Cheerios best of all. That's why I have a really low cholesterol. And when it comes to the ladies, I ain't no saint. I fucked Mona Lisa, cause I go hard in the motherfucking paint. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. But that's when they shut that shit down, because while I kept it short, I did not keep it clean. And apparently in my high school, it's frowned upon to say you fucked a Renaissance painting. <laughs> Everyone was pissed. Everyone wanted to beef with Sugar B after that. But I'm a lover, not a fighter. But that's not the day Sugar B died. This is the day Sugar B died. I was uh, in school and we had a career day. So our teacher handed out these forms and said, when I grow up, I want to be blank. I was like, easy, rapper. Turn that shit in. One of the few rappers to turn in their schoolwork, by the way. Um, and everything was going great until my teacher's like, in front of the whole class, Luke, can I see you for a second? I'm like, sure. It should be, but yeah, sure. And so I go, and I'm like, maybe she wants to hear the mixtape, whatever. So I'm like, getting the SoundCloud link ready, walking up to her. She's like, did you write this? I'm like, fuck yeah, I wrote that. What's up? She goes, so when you grow up, you want to be a raper? I was like, oh no, oh my God, no. I went to public high school, I didn't know how to spell. Ah, oh, and that really just tainted the Sugar Bee name, because I'd be walking down the hallways and people would be like, There goes Sugar Bee the Raper! I'd be like, Guys! I'm not a Raper! Like, I didn't even get into Stanford. Ah, oh. oh, yeah, I know, I know. People are like, that joke's outdated, but I like to remind everyone, every chance I get, that Brock Turner's a piece of shit. Alright, that's my time. I'm Luke Broyles, Sugar Bee! Thank you. Give it up to Sugar Bee!